Welcome to Arc for Dummies. Today's topic is mutations. We're going to go through everything to do with mutations. There's going to be timestamps down below if you're looking for a specific topic. And make sure that you guys hit the like button if you find this video useful and make sure that you share it with your friends. Before we get into it, I just want to quickly mention that this video is sponsored by NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN, I definitely would recommend Nord. I've been using Nord for over a year and it's fantastic. You can use my code SIDTAC or my link down below to get 70% off a two or three year subscription. What are mutations? Mutations are variations that occur in the offspring while breeding. There are two variations that happen every single time, a color variation and a stat boost. First, we're gonna talk about color regions. Every creature has six color regions, though not all creatures have six visible color regions. Here are four examples of creatures. You can see their visible color regions and the ones that do not show. As previously mentioned, whenever a mutation occurs, a color region gets a variation. The variation of color can land on any one of these regions, even the ones that are not visible. Creatures like the dodo have six visible color regions. This means that whenever a mutation occurs, you will be able to see a visible change in color regardless of where it lands. Now let us look at this dire bear. It only has two visible color regions, meaning that if you are breeding for dire bear colors, you might have a hard time getting a color variation. You have to keep in mind that the color variation has a one in six chance of landing on any one of these regions. Currently, there are 126 different colors that you can get from mutations. It is important to know that before the Genesis Part 1 DLC came out, there were only 56 colors available. There's going to be a link to this page on the wiki down below if you're interested in looking for yourself. Now let's talk about the stat boosts. Most creatures have a similar stat layout. It looks something like this. When a mutation occurs, it also gives a stat boost. This boost adds two points to a single stat, making it a higher number. Like the color regions, not every stat gets a visible change. The one stat that will never get a change from mutations is movement speed. If a mutation occurs and the boost lands on movement speed, we consider this to be a wasted mutation. It will still be present, but it will never increase the movement speed. Generally, when you are looking for stat boosts, you want it to be on stats that you would need. So let's take a Rex, for example. You would want health mutations and melee mutations. You wouldn't want an oxygen mutation or a weight mutation. And definitely you do not want a movement speed mutation because like I said, it's just a wasted mutation. It's also important to note that torpidity is not a stat that can be mutated. Torpidity increases with level. So the higher level the creature, the more torpidity it will have. Next up, we have the family tree. The family tree is a record of the ancestry of a creature. Wild tamed creatures do not have a visible ancestry. This page will also be key for when you're breeding for mutations. The paternal side is from the father and the maternal side is from the mother. Above each of these sides, you'll see the mutation counter. An unmutated creature will show zero out of 20. This number is important while mutating. Once this number goes above 20 on both sides, you will no longer be able to get mutations using that creature as a breeder. If only one side is above 20, the chances of mutations are halved as the mutation will have to land on the opposite side. If you are being careless and combining any mutations you have, you will go above 20 without actually having 20 mutations. You might actually end up seeing somebody bragging about how their creature has a bajillion mutations but realistically they probably don't know how to breed properly if you have 20 or more mutations on both sides on a creature a quick and easy way of fixing this is to just simply breed this creature with an unmutated creature it will move everything to one side let's get into how to get them and how to stack them how do you get mutations? Well, you breed creatures. It's honestly that simple. There's roughly a 7% chance that a baby can receive a mutation. It is also possible that a baby can get a double mutation or even a triple mutation. The chances of either of these occurring are very slim though. But remember, if one side of the family tree is above 20, then these percentages are halved. Another thing you'll need to worry about while mutating is the level cap. Most creatures can be leveled up 73 times in multiplayer. There are some exceptions though. X creature and Genesis exclusive creatures can be leveled up an additional 15 times, meaning they can gain 88 levels in total. Any creature in single player can be leveled up 88 times regardless. Bear in mind that these numbers are all based on the current state of the game. This might change eventually as additional creature levels have been added in the past. On official servers and on unofficial servers to the best of my knowledge, there is a level cap for all creatures. If a creature goes over this level cap, it will automatically be deleted after a server restart or if it's thrown out of a cryopod. The level cap is level 450. The level cap for X creatures and Genesis creatures is actually level 500. The 
level cap is important because whenever a creature gets a mutation, it gets those two stat boosts into one stat, and it also gets two additional levels. When you're stacking tons and tons of mutations together, these really do add up. If you stack a full 20 health mutations, you're looking at an extra 40 levels onto that creature before it can even be leveled. A good way of avoiding the level cap is to simply just breed in a super low level stat from a low level creature. You can do this with stats like oxygen that maybe you don't need, or try to breed in the movement speed. It is possible. Now let's get into stacking mutations. The way to properly stack mutations involves breeding mutated creatures with non-mutated creatures. This is the only way to achieve a clean stack of mutations. The first step is simple. Go out and tame a bunch of the creatures you wish to mutate. For this example, I will be mutating Allosauruses. Make sure you take note of the creature's stats once it's tamed. It's best not to level them, but you can if you want to. Bear in mind though, leveled stats don't pass down to babies. Only the base stats that are shown when the creature is tamed can be passed down. For Allosaurus, I will be looking for good health and melee. I would also like to get a decent stamina, but I'm not going to be too picky. I'll just take the best one that I get. So, after taming tons of aloes, I have narrowed down my aloes to these three. Right here we have the best melee that I got. This melee stat is significantly higher than anything that I got before, so it's perfect for this breed. Over here we have the health aloe. This one's got pretty good health. It's not amazing, but it's the best one that I could get. It's also a female, which is good because my melee aloe is a male. Over here we have the best stamina that I just got out of the bunch. Again, not really too picky about this one. It actually turns out it's a pretty good stat though. The next step for me is to breed these creatures together and combine their stats. I'll want a male and a female with a health, stamina, and melee to make what I like to call the perfect pair. I don't like to do the imprinting tasks when making this perfect pair. It just makes it easier for looking back on their base stats, though you can if you want to. When making your perfect pair, you also don't want to keep any mutations that you get along the way. So I decided to do one more thing before having my perfect pair. I found and tamed up a level 5 Allosaur. Once I had it knocked out, I actually punched it until I ruined its taming effectiveness, so it was nothing. The point of this is because I don't want it to gain any additional levels because I want some of its terrible stats in my Allosaurs. I want to try and breed in its minimum movement speed and its oxygen into my Allosaurs. I could also breed in the food as well and the weight, but I kind of like a little bit of weight on my creatures to carry some stuff. And obviously, you know, you're going to need some food on your creatures or else they're going to start starving really quick. So oxygen and movement speed were the perfect candidates for taking the fall. So obviously this is not necessary. It's just something I decided to do and I figured I'd explain it to you guys if you want to do it yourselves. Okay, so here they are. I have named the male Perfect M and the female is Perfect F. When combining creatures to make the perfect pair, you'll also want to get every other unimportant stat identical on each creature. This means that the parents will both be the exact same level. So as you can see from the perfect pair, we have the high health stat, the high stamina, the low oxygen, which is from that level five, the regular food from our high level teams, the regular weight, and that high melee. And even though you can't see it in this current build right here, I actually do have the low movement speed. Side note, this is a rare occurrence and I couldn't even reproduce this myself. Someone actually sent this to me on Twitter asking for help. As you can see, every stat is visibly the same, but the female is three levels higher than the male and there are no mutations present. You may be sitting there wondering what's causing this, but it's pretty simple. This has happened because the female's movement speed is three points higher than the male's movement speed. Obviously you can't see any of this and it looks visibly the exact same and it might really confuse you but an easy way to fix this is to just breed them until you get a female with the same level as the male you want the lower level because obviously there's no point of having extra points of movement speed as it's just wasted and you want to stay below the level cap the next step is to breed the perfect pair together like we mentioned each mutation carries plus two levels to the parents level in this case we'll be looking for a 195 because the parents are a 193 any baby that pops out below that level is not needed so during this step, you can feel free to raise additional non-mutated females to breed with the perfect M. This will increase the chances of getting mutations as you'll be able to get multiple babies at a time. Nice, we got a mutation. We can easily identify the mutation by comparing the baby stats to its parents. Remember, if none of the stats look different, but you have a mutation, then it is a movement speed mutation and you should get rid of it. Okay, so now we have a desired mutation, but it's a female. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but obviously we would prefer to have a male so we can swap that in with the perfect M and have it breed with all of these perfect Fs. I'm going to get rid of it and hope for a male. Amazing. 
We have a mutated male with a desired stat. Now we have to raise it. Once this creature is raised, we can replace the perfect M with this one melee mutation male. It's going to go ahead and breed with all of these females. And now what we're going to be looking for is a baby that's coming out with the level 197, which means that it's retained its current mutation and it has another mutation stacked on top. You can feel free to stack several mutated stats, such as health and melee, all at once, but the best way to make the most out of your stacks is to keep them to just one stat. This is obviously going to be very time consuming, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. With every new mutated boy that we get, we want to go ahead and replace the father. This is the way to cleanly stack mutations. So, we will be looking to breed these Allosauruses until we have a full stack of 20 melee mutations. Which means by the end of it, it should be a level 233. So, after a long time, we have something like this. One allo with 20 melee mutations, clean stacked. You can see just how much of a boost we have with all these mutations stacked, as opposed to the base stat that we got from taming. The stat isn't even imprinted or leveled, so this allo is going to be a force to be reckoned with. We also have another allo here. This one has 20 health mutations stacked. The difference in stats is quite large, and again, it is not imprinted or leveled. The next step is simple. We just need to breed them together to combine their mutations. The resulting baby will be level 273. Now we have the final baby with the 20 health mutations plus the 20 melee mutations. We can use this aloe to breed ourselves an army of super tough and strong aloes. So our 40 stack of mutations aloe is level 273. This aloe right here would have been the original perfect M if I hadn't have bred in the level 5's oxygen and movement speed. If I had to kept these stats the way they were, then this aloe with the 40 mutations would have turned out to be a level 343 before leveling. Of course, after leveling in the 73 levels, we would still be under the level 450 cap, but it just means that we wouldn't have much more space to stack in more mutations if we wanted to. It is completely possible to go above 20 mutations, and you can do as well if you want to. It just takes a little bit of extra work because, of course, like I mentioned previously, once one side is above 20, the chances of mutations are halved. While I like to personally use this perfect pair method, there is another method which is quite popular on official servers that I would like to explain. This method involves taming up a level 5 female and cloning it dozens of times. Cloning a low level female is not very expensive, especially if you're playing on Genesis where you can harvest element shards or if you have element gotchas. So instead of creating our perfect M, we can simply just use the wild tames that we got. Our good melee stat Allo is a male, so he's perfect to breed with these cloned females. You can even breed him until you get a male that has all the female stats and his melee stat. This would make things even cleaner. So this method pretty much goes the exact same way as the perfect pair method. We discard any mutated females and only keep the males. Then we swap in the new mutated males and breed it with the clones. Like I said, I don't really use this method, but I know it's quite popular on official servers, so I figured it's worth a mention. Okay, so here's a couple of side notes. Twins and triplets have identical colors and stats. If they're mutated, they're also going to have identical mutations. I mentioned that there was a chance that a double or even triple mutation can occur. A double mutation will carry two stat boosts and four levels, and a triple mutation carries three stat boosts and six additional levels, along with two and three color variations respectively. Some useful apps that you can use while taming and breeding are Dodo Dex and Arc Smart Breeder. They can help you further understand points in stats and mutations. If you're on a private server, there are some mods that can help you during breeding. Structures Plus has a structure called the Mutator, which costs 10 element and forces a mutation to occur while breeding. And Dino Storage shows very useful information such as the mutation counter and the specific points in the stats. I actually used both of these throughout the making of this video to get it all done quicker. We talked about a level cap in the game, but there's another cap that also exists. This cap is on stat points. You can't breed over 254 stat points into one single stat. Remember, one mutation boosts the stat up by two points, which means that the maximum amount of mutations that you could possibly have on a creature is 127. Don't worry about this cap though, because for 99.9% .9 of players, you're not ever going to want to go this far. But just bear in mind that if you are going absolutely crazy with it, then you might actually hit this. So that is it for this video. It honestly took a long time to put all this stuff together, so I definitely would appreciate a like if you enjoyed it or if you find it useful. Definitely subscribe if you like this type of content and uh, also I obviously do let's plays too. If you feel like I made some mistakes then definitely let me know down below and I'll try to update the description with anything that maybe I got wrong. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I might like to do arc for dummies every so often so if you guys have any cool topic ideas put them down below. But that's it thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.